Hello and welcome to episode 184 of the SideQuest podcast. This week, what up? Featuring things they're giving and things they're taking away. I don't know yeah. yet. <laughs> things they're giving. Is this, are you Santa Claus? Every time they take <laughs> they take a, uh, like a store down, I get angry, right? Because it's like, so the Aww. news is they're taking the Xbox 360 store down, or the Xbox 2, as Fran likes to call it. <laughs> use the year it came out and uh, i don't remember how am i supposed to get, remember the year it came out i'm like struggling for birthdays and anniversaries over here stop calling it xbox 2 and we won't have this problem <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah they're gonna shut down the xbox 360 storefront which you know there's i think i was reading on uh what is it video games chronicle about 220 games that are not in any other way available we'll just you know disappear for good yeah um they're gonna keep all the games that were part of that backward compatibility pr program up so you'll still be able to download games like that um but you know a lot of those games just didn't make it through that backward compatibility program and these games are just gonna like basically disappear did you spot anything on there yet? Like, if you had time to look of like, well, um, I did this definitely bums me out kind of thing or Bionic Commando it... rearmed, which I think oh. is also available oh, on yeah. PS3. <laughs> um, so I think I already own it on the PS3. I, I got to go back mm -hmm. and look where I own this stuff. Like, I, I know I own it, um, so I'm not that worried about it. There's a Darkstalkers game. Um, there is there's a full list on um, on VGC. Yeah. Um, there, there was a, an Echo the Dolphin game, which I'm not sure is uh, that a yeah, like a 3D Echo the Dolphin game. Um, it was a new one, I don't remember. I mean, I think because I isn't it still presented as like side scrolling, but it's like maybe it was know. 3D element. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble remember that one, but yeah, that's I don't remember that that turned out like amazing or anything, but uh, but still. Yeah, that is a bummer. Even if um, the games are not, like, the best games, and even if they're not, like, you know, it, it's still, like, this piece of gaming history that's just going to kind of disappear. The only way you'll be able to play it is to basically, you know, pirate it. Yeah. Which is kind of a bummer. I guess at least it. the pirates are preserving gaming history, in a way. <laughs> so we can I mean, the pirates. oddly. We are. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like you would know way better than me. I feel like anecdotally, Microsoft has still done a way better job than most of trying to keep that ecosystem. Like, certainly not Nintendo. It's always like, okay. Yeah, they seem like the, the first ones to cut the it off. The worst offenders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, I was looking at the list. I don't know if this is the full list, actually, because I don't see. It was in the comments of that article. Where's the list? Is it like actually uh, in the blog kind of thing? Um, they have an article up called Analysis More Than 220 Digital Games Will Disappear oh. When the Xbox 360 Store Closes. Got it. On BGC. This is a lot of games. It is a lot of games. But yeah, that's a bummer. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it is a real problem. Like preservation is a tough enough problem. That's why there's multiple organizations, right, that are like, yeah. They're dedicated to it, and you can fund them. You can support those folks. And if you have those means, you definitely should. Um, but, yeah, otherwise, I, it's just, for what you were saying, like, I think we all still live with that frustration where it's like, I'm so tired of, like, yeah, I know I own stuff sometimes. I'm like, you know, I could I could be down to replay that. And then I'm like, where do I well, <laughs> yeah, I think that was on the Xbox one even but even then i'm like i don't know and i don't want to spend the time to go like look i guess it wouldn't take that long but point is i can't, i just want to boot up something in steam and then log in and it ties into a database and it's like the game is available on steam for yeah. example so let me just play it i already bought your game but i mean i know that there's there's so many nuances and it, for those who don't know of course it is about not only the maintenance of managing all that stuff, but actually the revenue share, right? Steam takes a cut. Right. Nintendo yeah. takes a cut. Everyone well, say, wants their cut. Yeah, so it's Which easy to... Sense, but... Yeah, it's easy to say, but then because of all of, like, the money, it's not easy at all. It's super yeah. complicated. Uh, I do have... Yeah, a software program called GameEye on my phone, which is, like, a database of all the games that you own. Uh, oh, and I try funny. to add games into it when I get them, but since it's not actually connected to any services, it's not like it just 
knows. You know, it'd be really nice if, like, you could give it, you know how, like, you you could give it, like, your Xbox password and your PS3 password, and it would just then go in. Or right. Even just your, you know what, your password, Brian? but your That's what your I'm login. saying. Bring on That'd... the ultimate spying society, I say. Let the, let me, let the, <laughs> the robots know everything I'm doing for my convenience. Then all the games will be in there because they know everything that I'm doing. Good point. Find Watson. Who cares <laughs> anymore? They already know everything about me. You might exactly. as well give me something good out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's so frustrating somebody... though. <laughs> I was saying, I saw an article pushing like how there might be a future where you're afraid to go outside because like the drones are in control and might hunt you down. And I was like, you know what? Oh. Watts has a point. I don't go outside anyway. <laughs> so let them do the thing. Get in the neural networks of every and just what do I own? We I can't go outside database. right now anyway because it's smoky. So, like, oh, my yeah. future smoky, is that yeah. the world's going to be burning. I ain't going outside. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, invest in air conditioning companies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. That That's a stock. good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, sorry mm, for your crisis, everybody. I'm going to go cry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting that Resident yeah. Evil, if I'm seeing the res li uh, the, the list right, Resident Evil, Resident Evil Zero were on that list for Xbox. Yeah. So those you could have got them, but like have also physical releases, right? You would think. Unless they were like yeah, yeah. on the GameCube. Probably but only digital on 360. Yeah. I don't but know. But that's what I'm saying. It would it would potentially because like Resident Evil Zero, right, other than on GameCube. Has not been remade or anything, right? I don't even know where you can get it. That's why I got the GameCube. It's because they were like, this Resident Evil is coming out on the GameCube. And I was like, oh, I need it. It's a really good game. I think I got my uh, GameCube for Eternal Champions, which is not that different. Not Eternal Champions. Okay. Eternal you, Darkness, you, which is not yeah. that different. Mm, yeah. Yep. I didn't realize, actually, it did come to um, PC. Maybe around... Okay. I mean, I'm looking at Steam, and there, there was a release in 2016, so... But yeah, like still. <laughs> still though. <laughs> yeah. So wait, Brian, how does that work if you, so as long as you bought it already, obviously it still works fine. Yeah, and right? you can still download it. So like you'll be able to, down, anything in your library, you'll still be able to re-download after the cutoff date, which is I think, I think they said July 2024. So you still got almost a year. Um, but. July 29th is what I'm seeing on VG Chronicle. So yeah, so you'll still be able to download the stuff you own, but you won't be able to buy anything new. So I think that's similar to what happened with the Wii and the Wii U, right? Is that yeah. you can still, if you own things on that store, you can still re-download them. But although mm -hmm. that stuff is weird because your Nintendo ID, I think on those two systems was connected to hardware. So if your hardware dies and you go get buy a replacement, like I'm not sure if you can re-download stuff at that point. It's just lost. those are the questions. Yep. Yeah, I'm not realizing Resident Evil Zero you can get on Switch even. You can get it everywhere apparently, but bad example. But <laughs> I've never played that one. I should play still, that. Still, it's good. I mean, there's still speculation they'll remake it. I mean, good. It's good, like any Resident Evil of that time, I'd say. And it was, it was really solid for GameCube at the time. Yeah, I. It is hard going back to like the tank control Resident Evils. I don't know if you yeah. tried playing those. They were so good at the time, but now it's like, oof, this is really yeah. slow. <laughs> Any game where even you're like playing in relation to where a camera is placed kind of vibe is uh is interesting. <laughs> where yeah. the I'm enjoying uh there's there's been like a few indie games that are making their game with that kind of camera angle, but obviously it's been updated to be more modern and I'm kind yeah. of enjoying this. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool to see it come back. And you can really do it, it makes games very creepy, right? When you when they are controlling what you see, yeah. They can create some very, very creepy spook stuff. Yeah. I'll so still never forget when those dogs jumped through that window in Resident Evil. I know. I'll never forget. <laughs> I know. It was like I know. Spoilers. one of the biggest jump scare spoilers. <laughs> it got everybody. It was awesome. <laughs> it, it was. That was the thing you showed people where you're like, hey, uh, you know, check out yeah, Resident check Evil yeah. right before <laughs> play a little the bit of it. hallway. Yeah, it was right Spooky, at the beginning, too. <laughs> yeah. Go down there. Oh, you want to play? Okay, sure. Let me get to this hallway, and then I'll uh, pass it along. And then Nemesis. I'll never forget that fucker chasing yeah. me around for eight hours. It just felt oh, like there's yeah. constant you tension in that game. Anyhow. Anyhow. Well. Tis the eve before the absolute madness. Yeah. This week, yeah. 
tomorrow is crazy. Um, What's just for, for so we have the Destiny showcase, the final shape showcase yep. happening tomorrow. New season of Destiny is tomorrow. Gamescom opening night live is tomorrow. Are they going to do like a big press conference kind of thing for opening night live? They normally do a big like two hour the show, show of um, trailers and announcements and oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then Ahsoka is coming out. New Star Wars series oh, is tomorrow. That's coming out. I got to resubscribe to Disney. That's tomorrow. And Immortals of Avium is launching tomorrow. Okay. Which um, their initial release date was, I think, July 25th, which was like such a good release date. Because I was like, there's this really brief <laughs> period of time where there's like nothing really happening. I mean, and then, yeah. I think it's really unfortunate that it got this game got pushed to the same day as a new Destiny season because I think Destiny players are like yeah. the perfect audience for this no. game. Yeah, that's a bummer. There, there's been we talked about it on the last show though. There's been no good time. Like that was kind of a good time, but that also it was, was like what a week. Yeah. I guess you. I guess a game like that you could get done before. I was thinking about Baldur's Gate came out and. And there was still like when did Remnant come out? I guess that was only the last few weeks, but man, it's. It's, it's a good time to be a gamer. It is. Oh, no, Remnant 2 was that day. I knew I knew something. I think Remnant 2 was on July 25th. I think that was the actual release date and not the early access. Oh, right. So that would have been a few days ahead. But nonetheless. Or it was the 20... I don't remember. I was looking right now. On Steam, it says July 25th release date. But I mean, but either way, there's just, like so many good games out there. But I, I've been looking forward to that when I keep forgetting about it in this slew of yeah madness yeah um, but we talked about it on our previous show and yeah to me um and maybe it's because i worked with some of these people previously on the official borderlands show and like borderlands some borderlands people are working on it um from a marketing side but yeah i mean to me that sort of tell they kind of looked for people who had some of that knowledge i think um but it looks a little borderlands you got you know maybe three or four weapon slots of various, you know, this is a shotgun yep. type, this is a sniper type. But um, there's a little bit of that vibe, but it is set in Unreal Engine 5, and uh, it looks good, right? I mean, from a trailer perspective. Yeah. From a trailer pr perspective. Yeah, it looks, I, I want to check it out. I'm hoping that I can maybe swing a day before Armored Core comes out. Because uh, Armored Core comes out on Steam on Thursday mm -hmm. at... 3 p.m. Pacific. Wait, it comes out on when? Thursday. Oh, at 3 p.m. Pacific? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, by the time most people are listening to this show. I'll get mine time. from Amazon on, like, Tuesday. Next Tuesday, <laughs> not this Tuesday. It's the same day as Blasphemous 2, baby! Which uh, uh, is I'll looking honest, absolutely more, incredible. Yeah, I'm more looking forward to Blasphemous too. That's way more my type of incredible. game than Armor Core. Armor Core is kind of a long shot for me. Like I'm hoping I'm going to like it, but I'm not sure. But Blasphemous too, I know I'm going to like. Well, I speaking mean, how you... of Armored Core, they Fran, you should probably go first because this is a whole thing. No, I was just going to make fun <laughs> of Ryder. He has no time because he's playing Pikmin Four, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've right, been playing about... games. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> I played the Mortal him. Kombat. One he owns beta, it. I played uh, Final Fantasy 16 and I played Street Fighter 6. I switched characters. You notice That's what you haven't thing. played. It's a big deal. That but is anyways, a big deal. Sorry, That's sorry, a big deal. Watts. <laughs> well, Armored Core had a showcase on Friday. Did that. So yeah. they, they brought in like Fighting Cowboy, Ouroboro. They also brought in people who were a part of the like underground Armored Core PvP scene 10 years ago. And they held like LAN tournaments for Armored Core. They brought all of those guys to this event as well, which was super cool that, that they're neat. having so many people involved with it. That one didn't um, make the main stage of EVO. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a fighting game, so I'd hope not. Good point. Um, <laughs> So they had Fighting Cowboy go through uh, like a really early mission showing off PvE, but then they went into 3v3 PvP and 1v1 PvP. And it was super fun. It looked really fun. Yeah. Just like pure chaos, flying missiles, running in there and kicking each other. It was it was really fun. Cool. Very, very fun showcase. Yeah, I heard a few people mentioning they were like surprised that the PvP looked really good too. So yeah, 
And mm-hmm. it didn't even occur to me that there was PVP in an armor core game. Yeah, so I heard those comments too. They're like, wait, there's PVP? There's PVP, like, yeah. yeah. So it's got, it's got it all. It was nice to see that the PVP was looking fun because obviously like you're, I'm gonna I'm mostly excited for the campaign, but seeing the PvP is like, you know, okay, after I'm done, I can hop in there and maybe it keeps me around playing some armor core for a bit longer. Hmm. Um so yeah, showcase was great. I used to play PvP in I think it was Mech Warrior two over a fourteen four. Oh yeah, Odd modem. <laughs> that was an experience. I was like, was it Mech Warrior Two back then? I think uh, it was. I think it was. That two. sounds really. Yeah. Wow. I think it might have been three, but I think it was two. <laughs> a bod modem. Yeah, You're 14, right. Nineteen ninety five release date. Holy crap. <laughs> bod modem. Holy wow. crap. And I, I, I couldn't afford the twenty eight eight yet. Yeah, the totally. Six K was just a pipe dream. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Those, those are the that days. That just reminded man. me of DSL. And <laughs> the there was one other, uh, one other one in there. Do you think guys think that this year has the potential to be one of those years that kind of like people remember as being one of those like highlight years for video games? Like, like people look back at like 1998 as like being like, oh my god, so many of like the best games of all time came out that year. Do you think we're like at that level, or do you think we're like this is a good year, but it's not like a you know like legendary year? No, I think you're right. Um, I think it's hard to be as legendary because, like, still, like, last year was a... There's so many great games in general. Yeah. But the amount this year in particular is striking. It for is sure. striking, right? This but year think, is, every month, is crazy. Out, at least. It's like the top tier of every genre is coming out this yes. year, which is crazy, That's, right? We've had Zelda. We've had Baldur's Gate 3, Street Fighter 6, Diablo. You've got Armor Core coming out, Lords of the Fallen, Lies of P... Pikmin 4. I mean, Street Fighter. Nintendo's releasing a new Super Mario Brothers Mortal in 2D Kombat. style. Yeah. Mortal, Mortal Kombat and Water. Tekken are coming out. Yeah, I think Tekken's going to come out next year, it seems like. But still. I mean, it's, yeah. Like, there's the fact, yeah. Starfield, yeah, Starfield. Yeah, Starfield. Zelda, Nintendo. Baldur's Gate 3. It's crazy. It's insane. Um, all of it. Yeah. And then, like, honestly, Spider-Man there's been a lot of great two. Alan indies. Wake 2. Oh, God. Spider Man 2. Oh, God. Spider Man 2. <laughs> is, this going? Is that but, yeah. Oh Spider Man yep. 2, yeah. It's like mid October. This is a, yep. a big year. Um, it's incredible. It's a good reminder. Uh, Alan Wake was nice enough, per this conversation, <laughs> to say, you know what? We're going to push it forward a few weeks and give you some time with stuff like Lords of the Fallen and Spider Man. And they didn't talk about those games, but it was like right. obvious they're surrounded. Yeah. So they're, yeah. Uh, I think it's October 27th now for Alan Wake 2. And I was like, yeah, that's a win. That'll give you seven days with Super Mario Bros. Wonder, a little bit more time with Spider Man 2, and like, you know. Or the fall is October 13th. With all your game releases? What's that? Do you have a calendar with all the game releases? Well, I've been making it in that I do this newsletter every week. Yeah. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So because of that, it's starting to burn into my brain. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's working. <laughs> I know some streamers do have like calendars, right? It's like they'll, they know. That's way doing. smarter. Yeah. I mean, I've I've dealt with it in the past. I will say. Watch, do you bra- do calendar? Brain squishy. I'm probably No, wrong, it's but... all in my brain. All in your brain. Because I, I think for me, I am like, I play a lot of games, but they're a little more focused. So I'm like, yeah, Starfield's coming out and I'm probably going to really enjoy playing it. But I'm mostly keeping an eye on Lies of P. And yeah. like Alan Wake is coming out and I'm really excited to play that. It's probably going to be great. But I'm mostly focused on Lords of the Fallen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've, I can remember yeah. those ones. Yeah, by the way, Assassin's Creed Mirage, that reminded me, got that is true. up a little bit right. to like it October did. 5th, I think. Um, I got to look that one up. But yeah, they bumped it up. And I was I joked, yeah, in my little newsletter thing, I was like, oh, uh, it must be in really good shape because they're bumping it up. Or actually, it's possible that, you know, it's like, it's as good as it's going to be. So just You're get like, the thing we're just, the just and they, get the, out of the way. Get out of the yeah. way. Could <laughs> you got to move. <laughs> yeah, October 5th boom, for boom, that. Boom. Um, <laughs> It's crazy, but hey, NHL 24. Are, are you a hockey fan, Briar? I feel like you, out of all of us, would be have the best chance. I enjoy the Sega <laughs> Genesis hockey game. Oh, yeah, me too. The old ones. <laughs> but NHL 24 comes out October 6th um, if you're big at a hockey game. So. I enjoy a good fight. <laughs> now, I looked yeah, up I like that beer. release day. And you like <laughs> There's a lot about hockey yeah. I like. <laughs> oh, okay. What? 
where else do we go? I mean, do we talk about the menus in each of these games? Oh, I think we should All right, let's get, full right, breakdown. Let's get to the controversy. <laughs> to get into um, the title screens. Like, who's got the okay. worst title screen, do you think? Who's the laziest? That's right. <laughs> so what happened in so... gaming drama? <laughs> <laughs> Watts is like... <sighs> this week in gaming drama. It's a bummer. This camp, week in yeah. gaming <laughs> drama. <laughs> um, this was posted by someone on Twitter. Uh, who this has gotten into Twitter. a lot of controversy and I think is just generally a giant dick. Actually, no, that would be a compliment. Mm. Giant asshole would not be a compliment because your poops would fall out your butt while you're on the bus. That would be an old. Wow. That'd be a poor. poor <laughs> I would be a not a fan. <laughs> I didn't really know of the person until now. So. Um, yeah, this person, uh, people are disappointed because he was a former team lead for World of Warcraft and producer on Diablo 2 and StarCraft. Uh, Is so he one of the people, people that got fired for bad behavior? No, I oh, think my. he left a long time ago. Oh, uh, before they caught him? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just everybody who worked there now, huh, Briar? All right, so we're getting, getting a so, little off. Uh, he put out a tweet, the TLDR saying that the start screen of a game can reveal a lot about how rushed the team was and how much pride they took in their work. And then he showed a picture of the Starfield menu screen saying that Starfield start screen either shows hasty shipping deadlines by a passionate team overworked or a team that didn't care. Right. Just makes like, a, it's one of those two things. It couldn't be anything else. Also, by the way, it was, it was a leak. You know, that's all that's it under embargo. So that was the biggest news is yeah. they were also sharing this leaked thing, which whatever, they're not under embargo. Right. But, but yeah, to say like, yeah, I, I've been in game development and it was one of those two things. It couldn't be anything else. So people started, they're like, have you seen Skyrim screen? <laughs> they're just, like, everyone is now just tweeting out black. like every screen ever, because I don't know if I've ever seen a starting screen and gone, wowee. Look at that starting screen. I think I've just been like, maybe the music I've gone. Oh, I have. Music. Yeah, I've definitely seen starting screens been like, oh, that's cool. God of War comes to mind. Ragnarok, where it like literally is your save file, isn't it? Where he's like, oh, you know which one did it for me? Neo 2 has your character like leaning up against like your actual created character leaning up against something. And then you hit like continue or start game and she will like bend down and pick up a sword and. Yeah, get ready for that. Was, that yeah, was, I, that was pretty cool. I actually love the art of a start screen and like, and so I get the sentiment of what the person was saying, and and what a lot of people said, including uh, the head of marketing over Bethesda, was like, "You're entitled to your own own opinion." <laughs> but what I had said about it as well was like, "That's completely presumptuous." My response was, "You can have your opinion. It's art." I don't get right. We could argue all day about yeah, what we think yeah. looks good to us. And by the way, it's a still screen. You can't hear the music. It's compressed. Like exactly. you don't know what's in motion. You don't know anything about it because it can't even be talked about. The one good point they made is we didn't know if it was like 100% final. It's a leak. But I thought it looked good. But what I said above all, I was like, do you really think that they've been thinking about making Starfield for <laughs> de a decade or more that it, Xbox purchased them for you know billions of dollars and like the start screen never made it across Todd Howard's desk or the executive producers or the director. Like, of course, <laughs> of course. Cause I mean, again, what they said was they were probably just too rushed. I'm like, do you really think that anything made it across a director or above levels desk, let alone the people who that's their jobs is to love what they do. And they are luck. You know, I think many of them are happy to even be a part of a project. They didn't just phone it in. Well, let so. me tell you. Game developers <laughs> are taking a massive hit to how much money they make by choosing to be in game dev and not some other tech field. That's true. You make so much more money working on at Amazon or somewhere else. An so AI the only stack. reason, exactly. Crypto. So the only reason that people are really choosing to remain in game dev is because they like making games and they're passionate about making games because they're taking a pay cut. To be able to do it. Yes, good. Yeah. It's another good perspective. But yeah, the head of a, Bethesda. Is, be an engineer at Amazon. You make like double the amount. Yeah. But it was nice to see the head of Bethesda. Like, didn't like outright say this is absolutely our script, but pretty much said, yeah, it's been there for years. Uh, this was Pete Hines. And to say the things you said was um, highly unprofessional. 
coming from another. And then he took a little shot. Quote, Deb. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was clearly upset. Well Everything done. else was pretty professional, but the very end of it, coming from another, Deb. <laughs> In quotes. <laughs> Got him. So, like, yeah, I, I think spirited discussion around, like, the art of, like, you can have a civil discussion around, you know, this yeah, menu you can... leaked. Yeah. And, and like a good uh, direct comparison would be, oh, yeah, look at what they did with like Oblivion, which was like the music and like a dark background and just that chanting, right? But there was like nothing there other than that little like diamond-esque, I don't know what the thing is in the game, the, the you know, the logo, the pillar thing. But then like Fallout was like this really like ornate like camera dollies and pans in the garage of like all the stuff, all this detail. It's really neat. Bethesda's done both styles. Which do you like better? You know, that's a discussion now. But again, we, yeah. we don't even see this thing in motion. The music is going to be a huge part of it. The music is alone... a big thing for me with start screens more than anything. Like the Skyrim music. I think I would sit there and listen to the song before I hit start. It was so good. Totally. So the music is a, is a big thing for me more than anything. Sets the but tone. Anyway. Yeah. So that was drama. the drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the drama. That's kind of a funny one. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, really, it's what well, people were saying. What are people going to complain about with Starfield? What's it going to start with? And it's like, oh, they're going to say, oh, well, your menu screen's ugly. I'm like, well, <laughs> here we go. It's happening already. Um, There was a trailer that came out mm -hmm. that people have been waiting for for a while. And that is the Black Myth Wukong. Uh. And it wasn't just a, a trailer. It was a first hands-on preview. So people have right. actually played it and been able to give their thoughts on top of the, of course, seeing it. Yeah, it's recent footage. Yeah, it's recent footage. Uh, we heard that, well, Jeff Keighley, like, on Twitter was like, hey, we have Black Myth Wukong at uh, opening night live. So um, I knew that there was going to be something about it. But yeah, they dropped, I think this was a day ago? Yeah. IGN dropped their, their hands-on preview talking about Black Myth Wukong and, of course, there's gameplay and talking about their impressions. And this is a game that has been around and talked about for a long time. Real long time, so, right? A really it, long time. It's funny that uh, Mortals of Avium is coming out because it's an Unreal Engine 5 game, probably one of the first mini we'll ever play, if you do pick it up. Yes. But actually, I remember Black Myth Wukong was like, we're switching or something, right, they from did, Unreal 4 yeah. to 5. And everybody's like, oh, my God, look at it. It's Unreal Engine 5. And that alone got it a ton of press. It was one of the first really it did. Yeah. just highly detailed-looking, you know, projects. Yeah. And it's like a Souls-like looking game. You know, I don't like looking at 1080p footage on YouTube anymore. It just I know. doesn't look good. Do, I, I know. I was going to say something, right? If, it was funny because I've had this conversation with Watts, and we've – there's been some like weird, right, compression issues recently. What was going on yeah. with it? The, there was like bad audio problems last year. And I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my job for many years. Sometimes you get bad source. Sometimes like things are compressed like three times. I'm looking yeah. at this footage too. And I was wondering, I'm like, why am I watching 1080p footage of like Black Myth Wukong? And I started, I was trying to find the source. <laughs> I'm literally trying to chase down it. like, is this 4K or what? It, it looks blurry and soft. Yeah. It looks like it, it looks is... very soft and like there's motion it's... blur turned up to the absolute max is what it but looks it's... like. But actually, yeah, now that we're on the topic, I'm trying to find, I would like to watch some high quality footage because actually it's compressed. It's not a good judge of like, yeah, it's going to be it's a good not. judge of the gameplay because uh, there's a lot of it, but the quality of it's yeah. like really compressed. Yeah, I don't know terrible. what's up with that. Yeah, I mean, in yeah. general, like 1080p just not looking that hot on YouTube specifically anymore because, uh, like, even if you if you take 1080p footage on your computer and then upscale it to 4K and then up upload it to YouTube, it generally comes right. out looking a lot better. Right, um, the bit rates this, way higher, yeah, which they should do. Look great at all. You just label that it's 1080p source. Not a big deal. Exactly. That's I don't know why this is not common practice. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be necessary. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. Well, sorry. we uh we we're from this, we kind of heard that uh Black Myth Wukong is gonna come out summer 2024, is what they're saying. So we'll see. <laughs> because yeah, the game has been around for a minute. We will see. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Like, this looks like fun. It looks like a fun yeah, world to they, explore. It seems very Neo 
what, the way that mm -hmm. they were explaining it because they're saying that there's three different stances and that changes the way that your weapon works and Neo was very stance based um, and then you've got like magic that you can do. So it's it's interesting. What we don't know is if there's going to be different weapons because currently it's just the staff and obviously like Wukong is a mythical character that is known to have a staff. So we don't actually know if there's going to be like different weapons that you can pick up oh, that perform differently. Yeah. Um, we don't know that yet. Yeah, these bosses are going hard. Yeah. Ooh, who's this tiger no, looks... guy? Oh, he's like a tiger wrestler. Like he looks like a half Tony the Tiger and half Zangief. <laughs> <laughs> so a Tekken character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lamphead man <laughs> with tiger face has entered the arena. <laughs> Not to <laughs> Tekken's still pretty cool. Um, yeah, you know what's funny? I was trying to find more footage. I did see some 1440p footage. I think you're also right. It just has a lot more um, uh, anti-aliasing um, and softness to it to kind of probably smooth out some things. So it'd be interesting to see some really high quality footage about it. But yeah, it still looks good. If it's a year uh, away, no. there's probably some frame rate stuff going on too. But what it's really about is we we haven't. I don't. This is anyway. But he had a chance to listen to what people were saying about it um, with the hands on. I haven't had a chance yet. Um, just the uh, the the bosses were hard. The tiger guy, people were stuck on it for like mm. an hour, mm. to where they started joking that all the blood in the arena is from everyone failing oh, yeah. because that's how long <laughs> people were stuck on it. <laughs> <That's> uh, sick. <laughs> yeah, just just hearing that the bosses are are cool is the most thing that I've kind of heard. I mean, this video is only six minutes long, so. There's not a ton of in-depth look. Just talking about mm -hmm. the scenery. Oh, the scenery looks like this, and the maps kind of look like that. One thing we didn't really see is, like, rank-and-file enemies. Mm. We didn't see a lot of those. There was, like, a couple, but it was mostly bosses. So I'm kind of wondering, like, what the rank-and-file enemies look like. We did get to see them wearing different armor, so that's nice to see yeah. that we... For sure, have different armor. Um, I love the other thing Chinese that they mentioned, straw hats, you know, like Raiden. I love Sean. Yeah, more kind of like I'll wear that in any game. I don't care. I Same. Same. <laughs> uh, they did say something cool about the snow is like snow will actually pile up mm, the, the way that you're moving around the arena. It will actually pile up and stay there. So that was cool. I like little details like that. Yeah, yeah I remember seeing that some of in the footage, even I think the early yeah. footage. Is this an open world game? Ooh, I don't know if they've said if it's an open world game. I don't know. It looks like Sekiro open-ish, but it also looks kind of Sekiro-ish, which is why I'm drawing that conclusion. So I'm not. It sure. does. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm watching this kind of thing. And, damn, I really want Ghost of Tsushima too. I know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know. Okay. So I found the best, most recent source. I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA GeForce, you can go to their YouTube channel if you want to check okay. it out. They got a 4K. Sorry, I was a little distracted there, folks, but we did it. But yeah, they have a, the 4K source of, it's only one little over a minute, but they were talking about how it's going to have DLSS 3 in it, the frame generation stuff. So you're in luck mm. if you got all that 40 series and above tech. Um, we're getting frame generation. It actually, let's say it has trouble running at 60 and it's only running at 40. You know, you can double your frames the way that frame generation works and maybe get up to like 80 frames a second. Oh, this is oh, way better, Fran. Right? I know. Oh, my Much God. Look better. at the fur on Tiger Boy. I can actually Boy. see the details on right? the tiger. Told Thank you the you tiger looking buff. <laughs> He's been I knew I was looking gym. away. <laughs> <laughs> now it was worth it, though, right? It was worth the effort. He must be cut. But yeah, it too. is He's still good. <laughs> yeah, it is still a lot soft. There's a lot of anti aliasing and stuff. It but is like, very I don't soft, have a. Yeah. And it looks a little washed out in all of this yeah. footage, oddly. Like, yeah. Almost like a sepia tone kind of thing. I'll be honest. It almost looks like they sent like incorrect HDR footage out. But I have oh. a hard time believing that. Not, I mean, but it's hard for me to believe NVIDIA would also have posted that as it. So it might just be kind of, you know, some games, right? Like getting the black levels right and all, especially towards releases. Yeah. You know, it takes a while. So. It took Destiny 2 like four years to get it right. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's tough. It looks good. I mean, yeah. Now that I'm seeing a little more like that grass detail, if you skip ahead, yeah, he's like slamming down on these fields of grass, and you can see like the waves of the the wind um, from the enemies like affecting the grass. It looks really nice. Yeah, I'm waiting yeah. for this game. I can't wait. Looking forward to it. Cool. Me too. 
Me too. What else? I wanted to talk about um, Final Fantasy 16 in a minute. Do or should it. I wait? Yeah. Should no, I wait? go for you it. You got more Gamescom stuff? You tell us. Um, I mean, the Gamescom stuff, obviously, it's going to really start taking tomorrow. There's been a couple yeah. trailers like um, we can go through real fast where Cult of the Lamb and Don't Starve Together uh, had a collaboration announced today. And in Cult of the Lamb, it's going to add a survival mode where if you starve, you die. So you're going to be in control of like feeding yourself and getting the food and the resources and, and doing the same kind of loop. But if you die, you're you're actually dead. You can starve. <laughs> so, what, so wait, what happened? Do we do you know if like does the game just start over altogether? It's like hardcore. Uh, I don't is it... know. They yeah. let me. I can read what they it's actually okay. said about it because okay. they they went into a little bit of detail. Yeah, I was like, did they? Tweet. It I it already was kind of like roguelike, but I'm like, did they make it more of? Yeah, like an actual like hardcore like where you lose everything. Um, so it says this new mode is inspired by Don't Starve. Surviving Crusades becomes quite hard. The lamb must fend off hunger and rest or they'll face permanent death. Is the Don't Starve character going to be in there? Like the guy? Yeah, you can you can get the the you can get the spider looking guy. Okay. Yeah, from from Don't Starve. You can get that guy. There's also a secret quest as well. There was a Don't Starve too, right? Even Don't Starve 2 has got to be, like, quite a while old now. Like, Don't Starve, was that a PS3 game? Or was that early PS4? It might have been early PS4. I, I don't remember. remember. I have absolutely no idea. Um, but, yeah, that collab is coming out. It's free. I so love you don't when have to collab. Like, it's always fun. It is always fun. Yeah. And they have um they have new decorations for your your village and stuff. And then they also have said that they're working on a huge free update for later this year. So Okay. Very interesting. I'm always down for more Cult of the Lamb. Such a good game. Uh, Vampire Survivor yeah. just uh confirmed a director's cut coming soon too. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. That game I haven't played that actually in probably a year. I know there's been a ton of updates. I should get back into that. Yeah, there has. Um, that reminded me of what was it called? Hell. Uh, is it Hell Diver? What is the name? Hell it's a very Hell vampire. Diver sounds right. That's a game. Yeah, I think <laughs> like, it was that, that is a game. I, <laughs> I want. I wanted to try it out, but then um, I I didn't have time. But yeah, I was trying to remember the name. <laughs> I don't think it's Hell Diver. That's a different one, but it's Hell something. It's not just called Hell. But anyway, definitely look out there. That would be a badass really similar... name for a game. Just call it I'll, hell. I'll come up with it later. <laughs> just There is a game called Hell, though. Don't be confused. Is there? <laughs> yeah, but it kind of had that, that vibe to it as well, I think. So. All right. Um, we also got the official release date trailer for Ghost Runner 2. They did say on Twitter that the, I think it was the release date that was leaked. So they were like, screw it. Just put up the trailer, put up the release date. It is October 26th of this Ooh. year. I know. Stop it. Oh, it's when Halls of October? Torment. Sorry. I think I, <laughs> I say this every year. I'm like, when did August become the busy year? When did June become the busy month? When did September? Now it's October. October is this, this year's? October has a lot of stuff in it. A lot, but yeah, Ghost Runner Two is coming out this year. All right, if you were a fan of the first one. I never played um, it, but it looks yeah, because cool. we have all this extra time on our hands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the oh, there was news that we could just talk about real quick that Mario is no longer going to be voiced by longtime actor Charles Martin. Martinet? Yeah. Martinet? He's Martinet? been doing it for a long time, so it's not yes. super surprising, but it's still kind of sad because he's been kind of the voice of Mario it's, for so long. It and is he's, sad. It's He's also like a really nice guy, so it's like easy to be mm -hmm. a fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's... Uh... They did. I did see something where it was like it's actually kind of bittersweet that his last voice role in kind of this was Mario's dad in the Mario movie. Uh, so I was like, that oh. was that's actually real sweet. Is he not um, in Mario the new Mario game? What's it called again? Wonder Super Mario Wonder. I don't. I don't. 
No, oh, I, I, I wonder if that's his last thing or like, you know what? Actually, wait a minute. It was trending, and I think I saw an article about. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. Mario and Luigi have new voices in Super Mario Brothers. Wonder. Oh, okay. Ah, there you go. So that's what this it is would have been about. his his last kind of one. Um, they did say on Twitter they they put it, Nintendo of America put out this this whole thing, and they said that um, he is going to be moving into a brand new role of Mario Ambassador. With this transition, he'll be stepping back from recording character voices for our games, but he'll continue to travel the world sharing the joy of Mario and interacting with you all. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah, really you just nice. Get, you just get to like travel the world being like, I'm, I was Mario. Paid for retirement package, I see. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I like that. I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> Good for him. That's smart because, yeah, like I doubt he's getting like massive residuals of, you know, Super Mario game. Like it's unlikely that for the VO work, which, which when you think about it, right, you're like, he's defined, you know, so many generations yeah. and um, you listen, yeah, actually, I was just listening to some of Super Mario Wonder. And I'm like, yeah, like I would have thought that was it. So like, he, he's defined what it is for decades. Um, you know, and again, I don't, I don't know what the origin story was of the style, whether it was, his takes or director, you know, creator takes along with him. But either way, I mean, that's really nice that they're like, we recognize that you're a big part of the, this family. So yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully that's a nice, yeah, package of retirement for him, so to speak. Like, keeps getting some dough yeah. and can be a Mario ambassador. Yeah. And I know he loves it. Yeah, he, I've yeah, interviewed him a does. couple of times. And it's like, he, I feel like it's, yeah, it's his whole life. Like, he loves it because he'll... Yeah, he'll just throw in like the little like goofy Mario like sounds when you're talking to him. Like you can tell he loves it, and you love Aww. it. You light up and yeah. seeing it come out of his mouth in real life. You're like, holy cow, that's so cool. That's um, awesome. <laughs> so that'll be missed, but glad they're taking care of him. Yeah, it appears they are. Um, yeah, oh, appears. news that was not a part of kind of the Gamescom stuff that just kind of came out of nowhere from Bungie was Bungie put out a job posting. Frog post. A frog post, yeah. <laughs> and they said that one of our favorite incubation projects is a team-based action game inspired by several genres in a brand new science fantasy universe. It draws inspiration from fighting games, platformers, MOBAs, life sims, and frog type games wrapped up in a lighthearted <laughs> comedic world. <laughs> Like I don't frogger? know what we don't know. <laughs> you mean like when Mario wears the frog suit? Frog type games. Frog I googled fractions? it. I don't know. Is, is what there they a whole mean. frog genre of games? No, it's not a thing. Oh, it's not you don't want to Google that one. Frog <laughs> like gaming a, genre. I feel like I'm it was a distraction, so everyone was like frog. <laughs> I think it partially was. <laughs> I think it might have been. Um, it, it was. It was awesome, actually. Yeah. So after that happened we were like oh i'll kind of look at a new game and then there was an article that came out that didn't really say much about this game they did say that it is kind of codenamed gummy bears i highly doubt that's gonna here be and the there actual everywhere? game <laughs> yeah i highly <laughs> doubt it's gonna be the full because they specifically said it's codenamed gummy bears and in that article it made it sound much more similar to a moba than anything else but i'm sure they're doing like something different with the MOBA genre. But I got really excited about this because I've been saying for a minute that I would love to see what Bungie does with not FPS. Because they've mm. only done FPS stuff for a long time now. Yeah. So seeing them working on something that's not that has me pretty excited. I'd like to see what they can do with it. I bet a lot yeah, of people I mean, at Bungie we... would like to work on something non-FPS. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and they, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. It's true. Sure. That's funny that so many people are like, ah, everybody left to work on Marathon. And you're like, they've been working on the game for almost a decade. Uh, it's probably seven years at the time. But like, yeah, like they wanted to like try new stuff. Is this like probably matter? You know, the... the, the no. The, Matter really? was said to be like a hero arena shooter. And I'm pretty sure that Chris himself, Christopher Barrett, when they announced Marathon, said, no, this is not Matter. Like, he kind of cleared that up. That well, he said Marathon. It kind of sound matter, like. Right? It kind of sound like Matter is dead. Maybe. Um, but, like, so, yeah, maybe they're unrelated. Um, but that was, like, that colorful, like, almost paintball splash, you know, um, trademark that was filed, I think, and it had been right. talked about for years. So I thought, oh, is that it? And, um, but they had a job posting a few years ago, which called it, um, would you like to work on something 
with lighthearted and whimsical characters. Something yeah. comedic, comedic even in that Which from two years fit, ago. Yeah, would fit what they're saying about the the gummy bear stuff. Yeah, so it's likely that. And they even Charles said. Martin and making a Mario knockoff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they even said this was when they were looking for an incubation art director, according to uh, an older article I'm seeing on PC Gamer. So, yeah, I think those two are the same at frog least. Frog eggs. Yeah. But, um, but either because way, yeah, comedic. Frogs. I don't know. Comedic, lighthearted, whimsical, frogs. Very different. A frog yeah. MOBA, according to Watts. I bet. <laughs> frog MOBA. Yep. Froba. I, I do, I do like what Zella said. Everyone left to work on gummy bears sounds more funny. So anytime someone's like, oh, no one's working on Destiny, I'm like, they're all on gummy bears. You're right. I think everybody, You're right, I think everybody <laughs> took some gummy bears, bears. <laughs> took some gummy bears and <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what Briar was probably thinking about. <laughs> no, that was, it was big news, though. I mean, again, like you were saying, not only does Bungie, you know, they've only been working on FPSs. They've been working on one at a time, one. pretty much. Yes. Halo was pretty much their whole decade. Destiny was pretty much the next decade. Um, so here we are at a really crazy time where they've been acquired by places. They got multiple games in development. Uh, it's weird to see, to be quite honest. And um, yeah, remains to be seen what transpires into some of the mobile work, maybe right with NetEase, which right. invested in them. That I we was assume a long that time ago that happened. Yeah, too. like I think something would be it could be could be related to this, right? It could be. Yeah, MOBAs, uh, you know, work pretty well on mobile. Do you really um, think it's so. a MOBA? I mean, they didn't say that, right? They didn't say that. It's just so from, yeah, from what they said with it being like fighting games, platformers, MOBAs, uh, I was like, okay. But then in the article where they were like, according to our source, it that tended to lean, at least from what they were saying, it seemed to lean towards MOBA. But like oh. I was saying, I'm sure there's like some other interesting stuff going on to mention fighting games and platformers and a life sim. What are you doing? Are you farming? Are you farming right. in the moment? Oh, I want yeah, to that was life one, sim of what it's like to live in the in the city in Destiny. It's <laughs> a so 1v1 farming plot game where oh. who can have the most successful farm the fastest? Or right, get a big old hydroponic farm going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. a frog. So said it was inspired by all those things. So yeah, for all we know, frog type as well. Is just as influential as a MOBA. <laughs> Remember the, that big frog from the Destiny? Just as much art? frog as MOBA. It I, could be. I Everyone loves thought, that frog. Yeah. I always thought it would be more like an Overwatch esque type thing, like a hero competitive, which is kind of, it could be that too, I guess, right? Um, but I don't know, like platformer, MOBA, life. Yeah, they really want to keep us confused for now and they've succeeded. That is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> frog type game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's gotta just be a spanner, so everyone's like frog. I love it. Yeah. What? What is that? What were the best I'm frog sold games? Sold on the frog type. <laughs> that's an the article that Paul Tassi should do. He should do oh, like best frog-based frog games <laughs> as part of this. <laughs> All the best frog games. You remember the PlayStation reboot of Frogger? That was like a 3D action platformer. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I do. Yes. Yeah, but it was still basically Frogger. It was just like actual 3D visuals and everything, right? Oh, I thought I thought they had like Or a, did they do both? I thought they had Yeah, like a, maybe they did both. Like a like a banjo type game. That, you're maybe, probably right that they had, shit they had both. You know, maybe but, I had too many gummy bears today. Maybe. But we still had to hear about <laughs> was Briar going to talk about Final Fantasy yeah, 16 Final Fantasy still 16. or were we going to Watch, you talked a ton about Final Fantasy 16 when it was new, so I'm not going to talk your about it too much. Though. But I gotta tell you, like this story of Final Fantasy 16, it kind of grabs you right from the get go, which I was really surprised and happy about because so yes. many RPGs, like they kind of they'll start slow, and like especially if it's like a lot of cutscenes and a lot of talking right at the beginning, but it's like no, it's it's a lot of setup, but it's not like the hook hasn't like been set yet. It can be kind of a slog to get through, but this game does hmm. a really good job of, I thought, like putting you in the action and giving you your character motivation that you can kind of mm -hmm. like oh yeah okay I, I am like i feel for this character and i, I want to see him succeed i want to see where this goes i also want to there's so many mysteries like right at the beginning yeah like, like what is even going on here like i'm, I'm interested i want to see more uh and they do a great job of like kind of showing off this world that has like these 
I think they call them satellites, maybe like these ancient structures that fell to the earth, but they look like they're made out of like stone. So it's like, well, yeah. this is kind of neat. Like, I want to know more about this. And like, I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it looks fantastic. I'm playing on the PlayStation 5. I think that's the only place you can play it, right? Is it? It is. is that right? Yeah. They haven't done a PC version yet. It looks really nice. I like the, I like the, um, the way it's one of the few games that I've gotten since launch on the PlayStation five that takes advantage of that, uh, that cool rumble feature where like you can like feel the footsteps when they're walking on like yeah. a cold, hard floor. And there's like a bunch of that kind of stuff that just kind of adds to the immersion. I, I, I like that stuff when it's there. I don't miss it Me super too. bad when it's not there, but it's cool when it is. Uh, the combat is not super engaging to me yet. Like it feels like one of those games. It almost feels like, um, what was that star Wars game? that had the, the kind of dark soulsy combat. Jedi? Jedi, Survivor? yeah. Yeah, Jedi Survivor, where it's kind of like, it's it's like that, but it's not like, it's not quite getting it. It's not like, hmm. it's a little spammy, and like, I don't feel like I need the skill that you need in a Dark Souls game, so it's it's not as engaging, if that makes oh, yeah. sense. Oh, you, yeah, you definitely, it's more Devil May Cry, where it's like, yeah, sure, you can spam the buttons and like, get through everything, but... yeah. Or you have the choice of using all of the cool, fun stuff and trying to do the coolest, flashiest stuff. Yeah. So when I was playing, I picked up all of like the counter spells. So anything that could like parry or counter magic or any of or try and stay in the air for as long as possible. And that's where my enjoyment came from, because the game is not hard. I actually wish no. my one feedback is that they would have allowed you to pick the harder difficulty you get after finishing the game right at the beginning. I could see that because I think the combat would be more engaging if it was more difficult, but like, it's, yeah. it's a little surprising how easy it is when you pick like, uh, there's like two modes that you can pick right off the beginning. It's like story mode. And I can't remember combat mode or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, yeah. but so I picked the combat mode, which is basically, you know, their version of like, you know, it's going to be a little harder, but even yeah. in that is like, right at the beginning they give you like these four items that make you basically a god like it, you auto parry you auto dodge you your 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 yeah. your pet like basically attacks it does all this stuff for you so it really it's, it's really streamlines the combat so like you can you could not only can you get all that stuff but then you can also pick story mode which also like really makes it much easier too so like I wish the co I'm with you. I wish that it was just a little harder to make the combat a little more engaging because I find that when like a battle is a struggle, especially a boss battle, I was like it kind of makes it makes an RPG more engaging because like you feel like you've accomplished, you've overcome this with the character. Does that make yeah. sense? Uh, yeah. But I mean, regardless, I'm gonna keep playing it because the story and graphically, like it just it's it's really it's I think it's really stunning. I'm having a lot of fun just kind of like exploring this world and. Um, it does that kind of Final Fantasy thing where it feels like a big, huge world, but it's you know mm -hmm. you're really just kind of following these corridors around more or less uh, most of the time. So far, anyway, I'm only like six hours deep. Yeah, yeah it's I, interesting uh, to hear your I perspective. I love the story. I loved it. Yeah, I'm like, and it. man, I was a I'm now addicted to active time lore, and I need it in every game. Yeah, that's kind of a neat feature. I like. It's that too. really cool. Yeah, I could see yeah. that being put in other games like Destiny. <laughs> it's it's really nice to just you know you get to another scene maybe you haven't been to like that area of the story in a while and you bring it up you're like who are these people and you're like oh right these are these guys they're with especially with final fantasy 16 where it's very game game of thronesy in the beginning where you've got all these different Factions. countries or yeah. yeah factions regions and all these different people within them so it's really nice to go okay who are these people where are they okay got it understand and then there's also um no spoilers but there there there's a bunch of things that you can do with like looking at the how the wars have kind of taken place what's happened how relationships have changed over time because of all these things that happened and it was just really fun to jump into that and and really dig deep into the story because you can absolutely enjoy the story without doing that but if you do it i feel like you just get that little bit of extra info that really makes the payoff or in if you don't understand stories, what the hell fuck is going on you can just hit that button and be like oh okay now i know because i forget names yeah. especially when they're made up names you know what i'm saying <laughs> like your, your norgas and your norupudens and your you know whatever <laughs> <laughs> like i can't keep them straight if they're all made up yeah it's a cool game uh, nice. i also played the mortal kombat 1 beta this oh, yes. weekend yes. which is 
man, this game is really different than Mortal Kombat 11 uh, in some oh, pretty really? significant ways. Yeah, the, there's like this, uh, I can't remember what they call it now. It's like you could call another character in to like assist. It's an assist system where like if you're playing, let's just say you're playing as Johnny Cage, you can call in Kano to come in and beat the snot out of your opponent for you for like take a hit or like uh, break up a chain or something like that. The game looks gorgeous. Uh, it definitely, you know, uh, it still has that like feel of a Mortal Kombat game where it's a little stiff ish. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, little, like kind of. But once you kind of like it's one of those things, like once you kind of know what you're doing, like you kind of work around it and like suddenly it feels a lot smoother because you're like, you, you know how long it takes for the button to register and all that stuff. But I don't know. I, I, I'm looking forward to when this game comes out. I, I'm not big on um, competitive Mortal Kombat. It's just not my my preferred fighting game um but uh this game looks sick it looks so good it looks really good um, it is very good looking i watched yeah. uh some streams of it so yeah their own engine too i think yeah so uh this one comes out i want to say september like 20th or 13th or i don't know <laughs> september uh, so test, yeah, it's five. It's, I'm gonna say September 15th. I should, I should know. <laughs> uh, it looks Locking good. It up right now. I'm looking. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm, I generally just play the story mode, and the story modes are always so fun in these. Um, I'm not gonna pay the hundred dollars. They have like a hundred dollar yeah. pre-order to get like all the characters. Yeah, like, September September 19th, September 14th with early access. The premium okay. edition and above will give you early access on September 14th. So you got to buy the hundred ten dollar version to get the early access. No, the premium edition, which is I don't know if that's an extra forty bucks or whatever, but is it? <laughs> I think it might be. I think it might be. I'll check it out. I mean, Watts is going to be playing Liza P. She don't got to worry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even have to think about it. <laughs> you put Liza P in there. I'm like, well, there we go. Come out on the same day. Uh, yeah. So. Mortal Kombat One Beta was pretty fun. I'm I can't, I'm really looking forward to come out because I really want to play the story mode. That's that's what I come to Mortal Kombat for. Um, I also yeah, yeah you're right. Most... 100, 110, sorry, hundred ten. Sorry, hundred nine ninety nine. Wow, it's an extra forty bucks to get it like for the premium edition. I would have thought it would have been like twenty five or thirty, and then there was, but no, it's an extra. Yeah, you do get like you do get like a bunch of extra characters. You, there's a bunch of stuff you get. They also have like a two hundred fifty dollars version that has like a statue in it, which I guess is right. now that one. I, it's worth it. Anyway, sorry. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I also have been playing a bunch of Street Fighter Six, which uh, I continue to be absolutely addicted to. I kind of reinvigorated my addiction after watching Evo, and I've been watching like all the tournaments since because they they yeah. got that like Capcom Pro Tour, which they do like tournaments around the world to like register for the big Capcom mm -hmm. Cup next year. Which is really, I think, very cool because you get to see like the best of each region. So like, I'm in the middle of watching Central America West, which is neat. <laughs> you know, like all the best, all the best players of Street Fighter Six in Central America West. I don't know. They just did the Japan one. It, it's very fun. I'm switching characters. I'm trying to decide between Ken and Cami after being a Ryu main for the last thirty years. Uh, no. Cami. <laughs> Cami is a lot Cammy. of fun. Yeah, she is. It looks like you gotta get fun. the outfit, and you're <laughs> even when you get your ass kicked, you're having a good time, right? Yeah, um, but yeah, you know, I've noticed that it's kind of fun to switch over to modern controls to like learn, like, what is this character kind of like doing? Like, what is there so that when I go back to classic controls, and I don't, I don't pick classic controls because I of any reason other than I just like churn and butter with that joystick, it's so fun and satisfying, um. But like the modern controls, like you can just run over to a character, put on modern controls, and get a real good gist of like what is this? What do the combos look like? What is this character yeah. good at? It's very cool. It's very modern controls in Street Fighter Six are kind of amazing. If you've ever, ever like been interested in a Street Fighter game, but kind of intimidated by getting into it, it's like one button specials, one button supers, which is insane. Like it's so good. And then, like, you're just, like, holding the assist button and, like, tapping, like, medium or low or hot or hot hard to get, like, big, long combos that can end with a super. Like, you're you're really doing some yeah. damage with modern controls. Like, very, very powerful. Cool. Yeah. I yeah. don't like it. Modern's, modern's great. It is I've great. heard that Chun-Li on modern is amazing, which makes me go, <clears throat> ooh, maybe I need to play Chun-Li on modern. Maybe. Those thighs don't lie. Those hips don't lie. 
<laughs> are they are she even the most famous thighs in video games? Gotta be, right? Gotta be. I think so, right? Even Got my it. wife walks in the Probably. room. She's like, damn, look at those thighs. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah, I'd say probably. On that note, I gotta take off soon. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a five five <laughs> yeah, I think we're we're pretty much good. We've got a lot of news starting tomorrow. Of course, a lot of games coming out next week. I would have played Armored Core at that point. So I will be able to talk to you guys about Armored Core and Blasphemous is coming as well. So I'm hopefully gonna get some hours into Blasphemous before I switch over to Armored Core. That is a tough combo. They're, both of those games I'm really looking forward to. I'll probably yeah. play neither. <laughs> too busy playing pikmin <laughs> totally makes sense Thank uh, you all for joining have us. a fantastic oh, day tomorrow guys yeah. it's very exciting right uh be we'll a see great you week. on thursday for the postseason destiny stuff Man, and I monday hope, I hope for post it, i don't want to have thing. another depressing destiny podcast uh, the showcases a couple weeks ago it's just, oh. it should showcases be hype. in general are pretty yeah. hype it'll yeah, be a nice hype. moment it should be hype oh and if you're listening to this and you are a destiny fan um, you will be able to watch my stream watching the showcase mm. as well as a bunch of other creators to get the code for an emblem drop. Nice. So, yeah. Tune yeah, in. Go watch your creators. Emblems. Support them. Go watch Watts. Yes. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>